I hope you know that you, you can uh, do all these things. Um, I, I'd say the main tip there, actually, is... Uh, And the other question we ask everybody is about advice, whether through your experience as a performer, as a musician, as a comedian, you have conjured up some advice that you'd want to pass on, or during the course of that, you've been given some advice that has stood you in good stead. When I started out in stand-up, Josie Long said to me, um, you know, experiment as much as you can now before anyone can judge you because you're a you know, new comedian and just try absolutely everything out. Um, which I took very, you know, I took that very literally and I, I did that. And I still feel like that now about all kinds of, you know, anything creative. It's just like, just try everything. And you don't have to show everything to everyone. You know, you can just try it all and keep the stuff that you like. And it's okay if you can't really explain to people how you did it sometimes or whatever. Or they go, what, what, what are you doing there? And how did you, I don't know, like we improvised it or... That just happened, and I think there's um, it doesn't have to be about you and your ego and you being great. Uh, it's just about the end product and how that sounds or how that uh, comes across. You know, I think uh, just just experiment all the time and respond to it like a like a listener and not as a egomaniac, <laughs> you know, <laughs> artist who uh, who wants it to be all about them. And and I've got a couple of questions that I want answers to in that. Um, is there going to be attempts to? I don't think there is. There's, there's, there's a an EP that mm. is coming out later in the year called After Party. That is five songs uh, that I'm equally, you know, proud and excited about. So that's coming out, and uh, the vinyl version of Party Gate of Purgatory actually has them uh, on side. Side D is just the EP. Uh, right. So you've got the whole project on one vinyl package. There, I just don't think. We could ever do it again. I just yeah. don't. I don't. I don't know how you would. I think it was very. Is a moment in time, and that's great, and I love that. Um, a live version. That's what that was. Has a be. question mark over it because and, I mean you've outlined a core group. Yeah. You no, know, with Joanna and Leia and John and yourself and maybe Seb. You know that's a core group that could have mm -hmm. for a couple of nights somewhere. Uh, yeah, I've asked those people. Mm. They've all said yes if their schedule com uh, permits. I've asked. Um, a bassist called Byron Crenshaw, who plays on the uh, EP as well, if he would uh, be up for doing that, because obviously John can't play all the instruments at once that he put on. And uh, Byron's one of my favourite bassists in the world. So they're all up for it. Um, the vocalists, it would be you know tricky to organise. Um, I know that Quilly is up for it. Um, so, you know, right now, all I want to do is get this to the people who will like it yeah you know i i already feel at the minute like it's a bit of a mammoth task that i have to get, not get too overwhelmed by i've got i just accept the fact that um some people are gonna hear that a comedian's made an album and go cool i'm never listening to that <laughs> and uh that's how i respond a lot of the time whenever an actor or a comedian has made something i just won't bother listening to it and now here i am i've done it and i'm expecting people to act differently well that's pretty rich um so i, I just hope that I can get this into the ears of the people who will really connect with it and appreciate it. And after that, if anyone asks for it and wants to see a live version, I'll cross that bridge and we'll try and figure it out. It will be, and I don't think this is an understatement, a nightmare. But, <laughs> um, but hopefully uh, it will be a nightmare that would be uh, worth it. Yeah. But I mean, in some ways, I mean, in terms of attempts too, um, that question is also really about whether James A. Caster, musician, will continue to make music, because it seems that you've tapped back into that now with this. I mean, in all honesty, I don't know what... Like, I, I know what the projects I'm working on now are, uh, and I'm going to see that those through and make sure they're as good as they can be, and I have no idea beyond that. Like, I know what my stand-up show is this year that I'm going to do. I don't have any ideas for stand-up shows beyond that at all, and I never do until that one's finished and I can consider if I want to do another one and music is like it, it, I feel in a really lucky position at the minute this is the position I've always wanted to be in since before you know since I was at school I wanted to be doing a variety of creative things at the same time and um, really be able to throw myself into each one of them as well 
Um, and I know that musically, the Wow Scenario album, uh, I have to finish that. I have to give that my all and make sure it's as good as it can possibly be and then release it. And then I've got no ideas, really, uh, for music beyond that. And it might be that I never have any ideas again. And those are the, the, the two albums I put out. And I guess the idea or behind like throwing yourself into each project is that if you don't come up with anything else, then you did that thing that you go, cool, that's enough. That's, you know, if, if I only ever got to release this Temps album, um, I'm so incredibly grateful that I had this experience and got to do it and so proud of what's on it and, and such a, a fan of what's on here, <laughs> uh, which uh, isn't always the case, um, that I'd be happy that I just got to do this. Yeah, yeah, I hope anyone who kind of like, if, if it the whole thing seems daunting, but, you, but you're really enthusiastic about music and uh, you've got all these ideas, but you don't quite know how to make them happen. I hope you know that you, you can uh, do all these things. Um, I, I'd say the main tip there, actually, is uh, one of the things the book really helped me with was it helped me talk about music. It's really hard to know how to talk about a song and describe how a song sounds to people who haven't heard a song. But when you're writing a book about multiple albums, you have to really learn some new words, really delve into that vocabulary and get good about talking about how a song sounds, how it makes you feel, uh, the things, the images it might conjure up in your head. And that really helped when making this album because if I had any ideas, any it's the vaguest inkling of how I wanted a song to be, I was able to articulate it quite well to the people I was collaborating with to at least give them like the gist of where we were going with it so that they could then pursue something and it would inspire something in them. And when mixing it with Chris, he's at the desk and I'm just pacing back and forth and just talking about how I want it to sound and each instrument to sound. But he knows the plugins and he knows all of that stuff. But I'm there going like, we need a little less of this. It needs to sound more like this. Do you know that film? There's a bit in this film where this happens. I want it to sound like that. Sometimes just being a good communicator <laughs> which is again stand up has helped me with um is really useful when making an album if you haven't got all the various skills um you know all the technical skills that you think you might need as long as you can communicate it to the people who do have those skills you might be able to make something 